Today, we'll have an introductory look at the release begetter hero, Hela, the goddess of death. She has stepped out of her home of Niflheim to help defend the greater realm of Midgard alongside us. Designed as a tanky, poison-based mage, she is meant to get right into the action, deal chaos, siphoning the enemy's power to herself to turn the tide of battle in her favor, all alongside her favored companion. In order to unlock Hela, you will need a begetter unlocked on your character. Begetter is the fourth job of the Merchant Alchemist job class line. Hela can be unlocked with one job voucher. A job voucher can be obtained from character achievements or purchased with 88 BCC. When unlocked and changing into her for the first time, you will unlock her unique headwear and weapon skin, which is a staff. Hela, as a hero job, has a core passive, and the rest of her skills can be leveled by job leveling. Her maximum job level is 86. She actually has more active abilities than the average hero, so you may want to set up more than one skill bar for her. Her core passive is Phantom Interference. This can be leveled up by rolling the extra line on her 6 runes to reach the maximum level of 7. We will go over her runes after skills later. This is a passive that continuously activates anytime Hela or her companion Garm attacks a monster or player. She siphons stats off them and empowers herself. At level 4, she will gain 30% of the stolen stats for herself. At level 7, you will obtain a whole set of adventure skills that are usable on PvP and GBG maps, where you may choose the primary stat to focus off the enemy player. You can change this at any time during or before getting into PvP battle. As you siphon these stats, you can actually open your stat window and see them applied to yourself for their duration as well. Now, let's look over her kit for playing and activating her core passive and bringing out her full potential. I will be displaying the max level tooltips. Bottle Ghost is your basic attack. Throw a ghost bottle at the enemy, dealing poison magic damage and applying Frustrated. Frustrated deals 10% damage per second for 15 seconds, and can stack up to 15 times. Fatal Dream is your only AoE spell, and spreads off your target. A Nightmare Scatters, dealing poison magic damage to 5 meters around. For every 10 points reduced by Phantom Interference, additional damage is applied. If the opponent's HP is less than 10%, they will also be executed. Stacks of Frustrated can also widen this execute range up to 15%. The execute cannot work on monsters. This is an excellent combo with Bottle Ghost, and quite a good range from your target around them. I've added an overhead view to show how much chaos Hela can deal in battle. Since her casting range is 6 meters and the AoE is 5 meters, I hope this also helps give a good visual indicator of what to expect. Castigate is a passive linked to Fatal Dream, where casting a target with zero attribute points, there is a bonus to skill damage based off your luck. Forgetful Wine is a disease that causes the enemy to forget their skills for a short duration. This can cause combos to not go off and skills unable to be spammed. You can tell which target is afflicted by the goblet looking icon. Garm is Hela's faithful companion. Summon him to your side and he will protect by biting the ankles of any who dare attack her, as well as strike at those she attacks. Garm can also help activate her core passive, Phantom Interference, with his auto attacks. And if she takes lethal damage, he will sacrifice himself for her and heal her for 30% HP. No Near the Dog will place Garm at the chosen spot and he will roar in his proximity of 5 meters. He will not only reduce enemies' attributes, but also prevent revival in the area. Remember that he will stay there and not be attacking for the duration of the roar. You can resummon him to pull him back if needed. Rabies Vaccination is a passive that will offer your Hellhounds increased damage as well as healing to Hella for his attacks. Deadly Poison increases your reductions and your poison damage. Hella is quite tanky after all, so she can drink poison straight from the vendor without issue. Also, as a little tip, if you are out of poison, click the spell, and from your system messages you have the option to purchase as many as you need from anywhere. Bloodline of the Deceased is a great tool to stay alive in battle. When used and then drink deadly poison, you apply the poison state to yourself, but instead of expecting poison damage, you actually heal yourself. 
Bloodline actually causes all HP loss damage to heal Hella. This means enemy spells such as Twisted Bomb, Poison, Bleeds, and others will also heal her during this duration. Definitely necessary to stay in the battle during the chaos of PvP. Be mindful of the timing and of your enemies to make the best usage of it. She has two passes linked off of these two beneficial actives in her tree. Demon Turntable and Hide and Seek. Hella is always looking to play games with her enemies. With Hide and Seek active and using beneficial spells on herself, she will gain hiding status for a short duration as well as skill damage reduction. Demon Turntable has a chance for abnormal status effects on yourself to be transferred over to the enemy. Not only when attacking, but also when attacked. How's that for mind games? Black Party is a special cooldown ability, only available when she has siphoned off at least 80 attribute points off enemies. This is much easier to achieve after her core passive is leveled up to level 4 from my experience. When active, all her other active skills get a boost for battle. This has fantastic uptime in ongoing GVG and PvP battles. All your spells have a visual indicator that Black Party is now active. The main one to be aware of would be Garm. Definitely recast this to be sure you have two copies on the field moving forward. This means two anti-fatal hellhounds will be at your side and also deals damage and heals you. No Near the Dog also becomes an AoE damage spell for its duration. And while you have it going, if you have a Phantom Garm up, the Phantom Garm will continue to dish out damage and healing. Bottled Ghost stacks fast, Fatal Dreams execute is full power, Bloodline of the Deceased also buffs your teammates as a very vital cooldown. She truly becomes the star of the party when this is ongoing. Let's now check out her runes. There are three S runes and three S star runes to identify. All runes have the additional line to empower her core passive. Remember, you'll want these lines active if you wish to have her reach level 7 phantom interference. All her runes bring a lot of utility to all her active spells. Fatal Dream having an execute and res prevention is a great example. The S runes seem designed to keep her in the fight with extra HP and recovery. But all of them are very essential for team and group play. Now, how do we build her? She is designed to stay in the battle as long as possible, cause chaos, gaining strength from siphoning stats off her enemies. So long as she lives, her enemy stats are hers to wield. So we want to be tanky and survivable. For her stat build, she actually has an interaction with her synth weapon based off her stats. You want to try and balance your stats to hit 200 on each. Your distribution might look different depending on your stat unlocks. But with her weapon equipped, we want to try and reach these extra reduction thresholds as best as we can. With that being said, her primary weapon should definitely be her crafted weapon, Magic Wing Staff, upgraded to the synth version, Prayer of Death for Endgame. It's highly tailored to her stats and needs compared to all other options. Refined to plus 15, it also offers additional max HP and skill reduction. Major goals here. To unlock crafting this weapon yourself, head over to Aldebaran and walk to the Equipment Craft NPC to craft one for the first time. After this, it will be in your handbook for crafting anywhere you want. Also, once you're ready to synth, you can walk to the purple looking stove, the Magic Furnace, in cities such as Eclage or Aldebaran. Let's work on the left side gear first. We want to focus on tank type gears and cards to stay right in the action. For ancient gear, we want to get brave gear at minimum to get an extra defensive stat line. Legendary gear, if possible, for the additional PvP line rolls as well. These gears can be obtained from Komodo Museum or Lost Isle. My top choice here is probably Marine Soul Bulwark, but Historical Witness is also a very good option. Remember, especially for cards for PvP, you may need several options available depending on what you're up against or your PvP meta. You may also want element cards like Dokubi also available. My top armor choice is Tide Riders armor. For garment, I highly recommend the 12% skill damage reduction roll. I think either garment is a good choice. For feet, I think Super Mecha War Boots are probably your best option. For an ancient accessory, we can't go wrong with a bit of extra HP. If you're looking for something to craft, we can also go with Survival Ring. Let's work on our headwear now. One thing I always suggest if you're just getting started in PvP is checking out your vending machine in the guild hall for the PvP-centric gear there. 
You can fill out your whole right side with some starting items to get going in 6s, 12s, and GVG. And for specifically GVG matches, once you get some coins for the season, you can always get some of the seasonal gear for War of Imperium and War of Crystal to change things up. Just remember, Enchants on them won't stick around when the season resets and this gear returns. Helm Slot actually has quite a few options, but these are my top picks. For cards, I think being prepared with some on hand isn't a bad idea. This is a very flexible slot. For face, we have some craftable options and some gacha options. Since on hit effects work with the dogs, pumpkin icing is also a decent slot in here. But the top choice would definitely be Eastern Dragon Visage. Mouth also has several options to choose from. Kraken Treasure Key is usually the top pick if available. The top choice for back would probably be Midnight Stars. But if the blueprint is too pricey for your region, here are some other ideas. For tail, the top pick here is also the craftable amethyst creature. But if it seems impossible to craft and refine to 15, then here are some other options. Enchants to look for should be Divine Blessing, Blasphemy, Armor, and Tenacity. You can also get a mix of Stun Resist, Fear Resist, Max HP Percent, and other resistances across your enchants to help in areas you don't have cards to help. Definitely try to have a balance and work out your weaknesses. For extracts, unhit effects do work with the dogs. Because of this, you can use offensive extracts such as Holker Hen's Refined Hammer or Wingstaff. Wingstaff is definitely the winner though because of the sustain that it offers. Armor extracts can be defensive extracts such as Death Cat Armor, Meteorite Armor, or refined versions of M Death Fairy or Midgard's Bag if you aren't already using them. Her growth quests offer additional weapon skins and tail skins to collect. To do these, you will have to be playing as Hela while completing these objectives. For the Guild War 1, this refers to the Thursday night War of Imperium battle only. They can be done in any order, anytime, and will unlock individual quests that will give more insight and backstory to her character. I've primarily been able to play her on the CBT versus other tough opponents, and she is fantastic at whittling down the enemy and punishing them for trying to take her out. Thanks so much for checking out my Helda video guide today. I hope this offered as a helpful introduction into understanding her kit and potential for changing up PvP and GVG play. Thank you so much for watching. Do you have any questions? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, it would be super appreciated if you could like and subscribe. I also have tips and info, ROM news over in the community tab. Be sure to hit the bell and be notified to never miss out. I hope I see you again in the next video. Until next time, adventure, let's guard the eternal love together. <laughs>